Hey guys, welcome back to 9mm Ridge. Today we're going to be checking out the differences between the Canic Meta MC9LS. This is their latest addition to their Meta series, and this thing is fantastic. If you want to watch that video of the shooting review, check it out right here. And then also, we have the SIG P365X Comp, or X Macro, similar are actually the same size a slide length, but this one has the comped slide on the top there for less recoil. Not that you need it that much for this size of gun, but it does feel pretty soft when shooting the SIG 365 X Comp. But the Canik came in hot and they're really going after SIG's market because this X Macro series has just done extremely well in the market and they wanna come after that and get a little taste of that as well. So they did a good job. They uh, did really well with their ergonomics. They've kind of changed up some things on this compared to their um, Meta MC9. So they've added a longer grip, made it the same exact size as the SIGs. So if you put them back to back there, they're identical in size. So this is a 17 round capacity flush fit mag, just like the SIG P365X Macro. So they did a great job on that. Also, it is ambidextrous. You can uh, flip this uh, mag release around to this side if you're a lefty or a righty and then it also has the slide release on both sides which is pretty darn handy so very nice that they are complimenting people who are left-handed um yeah so what can i say about this so far it's an excellent shooter um, just like i was saying watch that video that i mentioned earlier but this thing is absolutely incredible has a really nice trigger these have all been cleared before this video but the trigger is one of the best triggers I would say on the market for concealed carry handguns. So uh, the SIG does have a good trigger as well. And I really trust the SIG 365 series. I've never had an issue. I've got thousands of rounds through each of their models and they're excellent as well. But let's check out that trigger here. Not bad, it's kind of mushy. One thing that's always been weird to me and you can kind of see the slide go forward a little bit when you pull that trigger. So just watch the back right here. Kind of interesting, but they've never had any issues and they've been excellent, excellent carry handguns. One of my favorite series of concealed carry handguns. But this new Canic Meta is really nice. I love the way they updated some of the features that I didn't like about the original Meta MC9. They've uh, actually changed this mag release and just feels so much better. Also, they've added a flared mag well, so a lot easier for reloads to get that mag in there because you have that flared mag well on the bottom. And then they've also added the interchangeable back straps on the back. So just like this uh, SIG P365X Macro series, they also have interchangeable back straps. So really nice if you wanna adjust that length of pull for your trigger, if you want it to come out a little bit more, you can do that in both of these handguns. Now, price is a different story. So these come in $700 range, somewhere around that. I think I even paid less because I got this when it first came out and it was in the $600 range, but now they're everything's kind of gone up in price. These Canics are not that expensive. I believe I paid right around 465, 469, somewhere in there for this Canic, Canic Meta MC9. So I did have a few problems with their original Meta MC9 um, with it uh, failing to uh, actually chamber around occasionally. So I know they fixed that and they've adjusted the spring tension, but that has been fixed. So they don't have that issue in any of their new Meta MC9s. But I really like the feel of this MC9 LS. So it's a longer slide in a longer barrel. So they do also make this in another variation. It's called the Meta MC9L. So all it did was change the length of the grip and you still have the original size 3.1 inch barrel, just like the original. You just have a longer grip. I actually like this better because if you're gonna do longer shots or better follow-up shots with that longer barrel, you're just gonna be able to hit better having that longer barrel and slide on there. So I like that, that's a good feature. I think that's good they did that. And honestly, the more I shoot, the more I like just regular barrels. I don't really care for the comps as much. I feel like I'm just as fast just having a longer barrel because that helps out with recoil and muzzle flip having the longer barrel and slide. But yeah, this thing is absolutely incredible. I really like it. They've even gone down to like putting some texturing on the magazine so it's easy. If it gets stuck, you can really strip that magazine out of there. Uh, the SIG has a good little beveled feature as well that kind of st uh, sticks out. Also easy to strip that magazine out of there. And then they do make a flared magwell. If you want to have a flared magwell on the SIG, you can buy one that adapts to this and it does give you that flaring to feed those mags a little bit better. But the, the comp series like this one does not come with that. But their X Macro Tac Ops, I believe, 
does come with that flared magwell, which you can remove if you want. But honestly, I think this is a better idea, just having the plastic flared, because for one, it doesn't really get in the way of concealed carrying. It doesn't print as bad, because their version, it kind of sticks out more, which will print more when you're, uh, when you're carrying it concealed. So I do like this actually a little bit better, just having that little bit of flaring on the plastic uh, grip itself, which I really like. So very similar, pretty much in every aspect. You can mount directly a red dot to the top of each one of these, which I have the EPS carry on the SIG here. And then sights aren't too bad. So the, the SIG has the three dot X-ray night sight. So you have the uh, tritium inserts in the, both the rear and the front. And the front has like a greenish kind of a fiber optic in the front to kind of help gather sunlight during the day. And then the Kinetic is a little bit less so because of the price range, you're not gonna get super great sights, but they are good sights and they are steel sights, which is good, but they are a single white dot in the front with the blacked out rear. So the only thing I would switch about this is probably put like a, a tritium night sight on the front because I actually like the blacked out rear because if you ever have to shoot further, I like that because it's easier to pick up that front sight versus having two dots. I think it's easier for me at least to have that set up like that. So that's just that's just me. Everyone has their personal preference when it comes to sight sights. And honestly, most people just use red dots anymore because they're uh, less expensive. Vortex makes a good one. Holliston makes good ones. There's, there's just a lot of options out there. And most people use these because they actually are easier to shoot with a red dot mounted on top. I do like some of the safety features. Some people hate them and some people love them. I actually don't mind them at all. I think that feels fine on here. So they have quite a few safety features. They don't have an external safety, neither does the SIG, but you can buy that variation. But it does have a cocking indicator on the back. So right now it is cocked, indicating that it's ready to pull the trigger. And it also has a chamber indicator, which will just kind of slightly pop up and then you'll see that you have a round loaded in the chamber. If it's flat like this, there's nothing in the chamber. So I like that. Some people can't stand it, but I absolutely um, think it's a great idea because if you have it in your holster, you can feel, oh yeah, it's cocked. And is there any a round in the chamber? Yes. So just in case, if you forget when you're putting it in your holster, which you shouldn't be forgetting, but if you do, that is a nice feature to have available. So not a not a huge deal breaker for me, but I do like that feature. Both grips are really nice. They both have a really great undercut around the trigger guard. Um, also, I like that little index pad right there so you can see where your thumb's sitting. You can just know where to go right away. And also keeps your thumb from slipping or especially if you're wearing gloves. I do like that feature as well, which the SIG does not have that. But the cool thing about the SIG is that you can interchange the grips and you can change this grip out to whatever you want because this is not considered part of the pistol. It's the, actually the fire control unit which sits inside the SIG P365. You can actually pop that out and you can put it on any type of grip and there's a bazillion grips out there now that are um, aftermarket that you can put in the SIG P365 series. So that has a huge plus over the Canic. So this whole Canic is the gun itself. But guys, that's some uh, a quick comparison of both these two guns. These are really great guns and great options. I have about 600 rounds to the Canic now, zero failures, and I've ran everything from plus P to just range ammo to all sorts of hollow points. It's been excellent so far. And then the SIG P365 uh, X Macro or any other 365 series are excellent. I have thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds, and I think I've maybe had one malfunction out of all those rounds, and that was ammo related. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it gave you a, a nice comparison of the two and helped you make a decision if you're thinking about purchasing one of these guns ever. But thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.